protection dogs right like level one two three and that there are levels a lot of protection dog companies don't have levels okay and that's fine so they'll for example one company sells protection dogs for 150,000 not a penny less and every single dog is trained exactly the same there is no difference between the Rottweiler, the Connie Corso, the Doberman, doesn't matter the breed. Every single dog, it's a cut, cookie cutter system where it's just basics of training. That's it. Nothing advanced, nothing, you know. <laughs> and each one is going to be trained exactly the same. There are no differences between any of them. So it would just depend on what breed you prefer, okay? That is not the way we work, okay? Because in that one, you know, level system, cookie cutter system, it's very generic, right? Where there's not a lot of diversity. There's a lot of things lacking, okay, in skills. So that's why we have the levels one, two, three, and then we have a four for people who really need outrageous stuff. Okay. And we do have a lot of clients in that level four category. And I'll discuss that when we get to level four. So level one, we have the basic functional hold our leg right as in walking healing that they hold the leg tightly nicely perfectly concept and position if we ever need the dog leash or no leash doesn't matter that that dog will turn on and bark at the person when we say the word the cue to watch okay and that activates the dog to go into aggressive hostile state So here we go, he downs, Sue's going to tell him to watch, he goes into action, and then she's going to shut him off, and that's it, no more. Okay. To try to scare the person, okay? Not to let this go any further and just to back them off and just let them know. Not to go any further with this hostile act towards us or else okay so as the dog turns on here at the leg they're not allowed to move from this position 
Okay, this is control. Okay, massive control. So to hold the dogs drive back, right? Because they all want to go attack. <laughs> That's the easy part, right? To just have dogs attack. That's the easy part. The skilled part and the thing that costs money takes us time to do, create, is control in the protection game. Just Letting dogs go fly attack, again, like I've said in all the previous videos, takes very little skill to none. And so it's, it's, it's not even really something worth, like, yes, it can protect your life. Yes, it's great to have. We need it for sure. But it's a very, very low level skill to teach. Okay. So the dog holding the leg controlling itself, knowing it cannot just fly off an attack, okay? It just stays there and barks aggressively, threatening somebody. them they go fly out on the end of the line and go crazy right considered a fully trained elite protection dog okay and that's what the world is believing that that's what a protection dog is and the dog was sold for $150,000 okay and all this bouncing on a leash is unacceptable again it's beginner stuff baby stuff <laughs> not a controlled protection dog let's put it that way so 
I've been saying in the videos that anybody can handle my dogs that I build, okay? That I will never sell anybody a dog that bounces on a leash and pulls and goes crazy with his teeth and all that, right? That to me is not a trained dog, okay? So I will never sell that kind of dog. Not for 10,000, 15, 50, 70, 100, 150, doesn't matter. It will never leave my facility being that way because that's an untrained dog to me. That's a day one beginner dog. So I was showing how controlled and disciplined our dogs are that anybody can handle them. Men, women, children. What you doing, little boy? Handicapped, disabled, okay, because they do not go crazy on a leash when you go, watch up, and they go crazy, right? That owner of that Doberman has young teenage girls, okay? And they better pray that those girls, if they're ever walking with that Doberman somewhere, never needs that dog. Because if they do, you know those girls are going to be scared to turn that dog on because that's going to be a lot of dog to try to hold back. All right? So, <laughs> you know that in those particular cases, they're going to be thinking, oh my God, do I have to turn them on? And even if two of the girls were holding on at the same time, they're going for a ride. They're probably going to crash into each other, fall on the floor, go for a ride on the concrete, that dog's gonna pull them all over the place, okay? If they have to turn him on and try to use him to protect them. That just doesn't work functionally. That's just not acceptable, okay? So again, saying that anybody, and I use children as an example because I showed women doing it, examples of if you are in a wheelchair, right? It's the same thing. So here we're going to do something we've never done before. Sue's calling Rocco out of the house. I'm walking around, just cruising around. He has to ignore me. Listen to Sue. Go straight to her. Not mess with me at all. She puts him down. She's going to go in the house. She's going to stay there for a little bit and just leave me and Rocco outside alone together. He's got to hold his downstay. Not let me bother him while he's in command. So I'm just strolling around seeing if any movement will trigger him to get out of that down. Either just breaking it down or trying to go after me. Either one. Here I pet him. Make sure there's no aggression whatsoever while he's holding his commands. Perfect. And then Sue calls him past me and to her. Perfect. Exactly what we want to see. Now here she turns him on. Gives him the watch command. Now the more here, moving around, I'm trying to bait him into a mistake. Rocco has no leash on, and I'm trying to really get to him by all the movements and closeness. And then there, I make my move, and he should attack me defending his owner, just like he did. All right.
side. And here, Sue turns him on into aggression. I'm making all sorts of moves. I left my little things dangling. It drives him crazy. And then Sue's going to tell him to out. Shut off the aggression. No more talking to me. No more lunging. And here, I should be able to come in and pet him. Just like I'm going to do right now. And then I walk back out. He shouldn't react to me at all. Then here Sue turns him back on. Now you see there, he went right into engaging the leash on. He was going to take off. He held himself from taking off to try to attack me, just like he should, self-control. Here I'm trying to bait him again. A lot of movements, a lot of jumping around to make him really, really try to come off his game. But he's holding it terrific. And then here, Sue's going to shut him off again, and then I'm going to come in and pet him again. Exactly the way protection should be. Light switch on, light switch off. You turn. All right, and then here we're going to send Rocco to bite because we want to make sure that when we had shut him that we don't damage his bite at all, to, that he doesn't go anymore because we were shutting him off. So we're flip-flopping back and forth to make sure he's fluent with turning off and on cues he's allowed to go bite without any hesitation. And there, right away, as soon as Sue sends him, he hits me right up in the upper, and man, I got a bruise from that hit. That hurt. <laughs> you can see it there. That hurt badly. hold at the body and not be able to pursue me until she tells him to leave that spot. And here you see he holds, no matter how much I move around, I'm trying to bait him into failure by moving back and forth across the hallway to see if I can turn him on enough to make a mistake. He holds next to Sue barking, and I tell Sue send him, and then when she tells him to come, bail. <laughs> Phenomenal hit and aggression right into me. Beautiful. Here, he holds without the leash, 
right next to Sue when she tells him to watch, right on cue. He goes into action. Not allowed to leave the body unless I go touch or she sends him. So I test him and I go around him. He holds perfectly and then I back out instead of touching. I now want to give him the reward of being sent and make sure he leaves right away on the queue to do what he was told to make sure the fluency is still there and he hasn't gotten rusty. which is a lot more than you're going to get anywhere else. Okay? The $150,000 dogs from the company that I've been referring to that's selling the most expensive dogs in the world don't have any of these skills. <laughs> so our level one is way beyond that company's $150,000 cookie cutter system, okay? Where we have so much more value in just our beginner package than the end result of almost all other companies, okay? And one thing that separates us big time, okay, from everybody else, and I'm known for this, in the protection world. Control, control, control. 
It's all about total control of that dog and his mind and his aggression. We do not want any out of control behaviors, a dog on his own gambling, okay, causes major issues in confused dogs and gambling dogs, where they will just, if they have a mood and they're not trained properly, will just tag people if they feel like it because they're having a moment, all right? And good, skilled dogs don't have moments. They understand it's black and white on how the protection game works. So control, 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 skill, skill, skill. This is what you're supposed to be buying when you buy a protection dog. Not out of control chaos.